Hi, I'm Nicole Hummel and I'm a ceramic artist based in Eugene, Oregon. And today I'm gonna be demonstrating slip trailing, which is a surface decoration technique that I learned um, from a couple different teachers, but mostly from a potter named John Vigeland down in Southeast, in the Southeast, Southeastern United States in North Carolina. He works with East, East Fork Pottery and he was trained in this tradition of slip trailing, which is a very old um, production pottery um, technique of decorating. Decorating It's very quick, very efficient um, once you've got it figured out. And um, I, it's something that I really enjoy. So first I'm gonna show off, show some of the pieces that I make that, that incorporate this technique called slip trailing. Um, I'll show first a piece that has been fired in a gas kiln. This is a teacup and saucer that has been slip trailed. In this case, I paint on a cobalt blue slip and then slip trail over that. Um, I also have this bowl which is wood fired in a wood kiln. And this is slip trailed directly onto the raw clay and then fired in a wood kiln for atmosphere. So you can see the beautiful variation of the surface. And then this last piece is a bigger one, um, which showcases one of the things that I really love about slip trailing, which is that it really responds to the atmosphere. You can see that um, the, the, decorating, the decoration that I did on this piece um, really interacted with the ash that collected on the pot during the wood firing. It kind of collected and pooled down and then dripped down from this raised surface of the slip trailing. So um, here's one more example, put a little farther back, of a uh, wood fired slip trailed piece. And all of these pieces, um, you know, the, the slip, one of the things that I really love about slip trailing is that it's a raised surface. It's a very three-dimensional surface. Um, so if I hold this close to the camera, it's, it's very, it's, you feel it. And so that will respond to glaze, will respond to atmosphere um, in its own unique ways. So um, what I often like to do, there, there are several variables with slip trailing that make it challenging. Um, one of the variables is the actual consistency of your slip. I mix up a slip and I really go for like a pancake batter kind of consistency. Um, you can um, see that I have it, I have it in um, a big, this is actually a, a bottle that's used for doing hair dyeing, uh, like a color applicator. I just like it because it holds a bigger volume of the of the material um, as opposed to the slip trailers that you would buy at a ceramic supply store, which usually hold a smaller quantity. So um, one way that I like to test my, my material, make sure that this is the right consistency, is by using a bat. And let's give it a good shake first. Oop, and already we've got a block in the hole. So that happens a lot. You wanna have, your needle tool handy, or I have this porcupine quill that I really like to use. Poke it out. Mm, it's not cooperating with me. Um, but so the, the slip trailer, yeah, like I, as you can see, even though I, I just filled this earlier and tested it out like a few hours ago, knowing that I would make this video, they can be really finicky and having, um, Having it clogged up is really annoying. Okay, so now that I've unblocked it, it trails out a little more evenly. So I trailed it onto that sponge, but we'll trail it onto here. You can see here, it's really holding a bead, um, not dripping down the surface at all. Um, this is actually a little bit thicker than I usually like. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of water to this one. I unscrew my cap. The other thing that I like about these is that they, um, you can adjust the, the moisture inside, the, the hydration inside the container itself. So adding just a small amount of water at a time really will, um, will change a lot. So I shake it back up. And let's test it again. Okay, 
Okay, so that's getting a little more drippy, which I like. And this is now the consistency that I like more. So I really love practicing on a bat. And you can see that I have this bat ready for it. And my towel's over here. Um, I really love practicing on a bat. So I am going to turn my camera down and I'm gonna just show some of the different decoration patterns that I do. So I like to hold hold it kind of almost like a, like a platter. And let's start with a very simple one, the fern, the fern pattern, which I did on this bowl and also on this teacup and saucer. Really beautiful for decorating the rims of things. So I start with a bead. The basic idea is that you're squeezing the bottle and then releasing the pressure on the bottle. So I squeeze out a bead and then release as I'm pulling. Squeeze and release. So practicing that a couple times. Finding what size bead you like. And playing around with that, that technique. Um, so often with the with the fern pattern, I usually start with one that kind of will be the stem. And I don't really care about little splats like that. You might have noticed that I did that. Those all tend to be very not noticeable in the end. So there we go. There's a fern. Another um, beautiful pattern that is this kind of scrolling floral pattern. So it's all about building um, building up the design. So it starts with a squiggle like this and then And then it just builds from there. So filling in these kind of petal shapes. And these are just some of the patterns that I like to make. Um, I also love to invent patterns. The cool thing about this technique is you can really do whatever you want once you've kind of figured out how to manage the slip. A big piece that people often have trouble with when I've taught this is people get very meticulous, really try to control everything. I always feel like really relaxing your shoulders, moving your chest, moving your neck, taking some deep breaths, and just trying to really relax as you do this makes a really big difference. Some of the other ones that I've invented, you could do like a leaf, which is kind of building on that. And then just improvising from there, sometimes I'll do kind of swirls. It's actually um, when, when people saw that I really liked doing this technique on my pottery and saw my process of doing it, people said that it reminded them of henna. And henna is actually a very similar consistency when it squeezes out of the, the tube that you use. So um, it's fun to see how different mediums overlap in that way. So now that we've practiced a lot on the bat, and I really recommend, um, so I'm going to bring the camera back up here. I really recommend trying that and practicing that for a while. Um, it really helps kind of build the fluidity of the movement, build um, the mechanical, um, kind of the mechanical relaxation that's required. So what I, what I mean by that is that, that relaxation in your arm, in your hand that's doing the slip trailing so that, um, so that you can really have it come out not too contrived. When I look at some of the, some of my initial efforts at slip trailing, I see how like forced it looks and I was really trying to control it and I think the more relaxate, uh, relaxed you you approach it the better. So there's um, the little 
bat that that um and any kind of bat will work for this a plastic bat and the cool thing is you could just wipe it and do it again so um i really recommend trying that now i'm gonna slip trail on an actual piece and i have some bowls over here that are ready to be trimmed so i figured i would go ahead and trim a bowl so you could see that part of the process and um and then slip trail it so we'll turn the camera back down find one that feels the driest here of course i'm doing something um which i don't really recommend when you're slip trailing which is i'm kind of rushing things along so these are slightly damper than i would actually like um but i think it will work for this process so i i like to tap center on the wheel so there we go and then I'll start trimming away the consistency so another variable with slip trailing that really affects um, how how it looks in the end and how it how it kind of uh, how smoothly it goes as you're applying the slip is the consistency of the clay that you're slip trailing onto. So as we were practicing on the bat, we didn't really get to experience that, um, that part of it. That's kind of narrowing, simplify, um, simplifying down to the one variable of the slip and your body, finding that relaxation in your body and finding the right consistency of the slip I'm almost finished here. Okay. So now I'm going to dry my hands off a little. I, as I pick up this bowl and kind of feel the consistency of it. Okay. And that feels pretty good to me. So, um, actually I'm seeing that there's a little bit of an unevenness in the, in the edge of the bowl. So I'm gonna just trim that up a little bit more. Often with bowls, I try to throw them so that there's a minimal amount of clay that needs to come off at the end. You know, there are lots of reasons for doing this, um, saving the clay and not having too much scrap. Um, the form of the bowl I think is often nicer when you really get that outer shape um, refined with the first step of the process when during the throwing and then having be the having the the focus of the trimming really just be the foot but in the case of this bowl I just didn't like that shape on the side so um so there's my bowl and I'm gonna grab my banding wheel because the banding wheel is what I like to use when I'm trailing on this kind of a form. And I'm just gonna set my banding wheel on the wheel head for the sake of this video. Okay, and so I put my bowl on the banding wheel, make sure it's nice and centered. You can kind of tap center here too. If you're not someone that likes to tap center, then eyeball it, that'll be good enough. Again, with a slip trailing, like the less neurotic you are, the better. Um, the more relaxed you can be with the process, the, the more um, elegant and kind of effortless it'll look as a final process. Although that's kind of my, my general theory with ceramics, so I guess uh, maybe that might not suit you, but that's what I like to do. So I'm going to do um, the same pattern that I had on this one. This is actually a set of bowls that I've been commissioned to make um, for a customer. And so I'm going to do this same pattern, just basically a set of three, three of the fern patterns on the outside of the bowl. And in this case, the, the bead kind of starts at the rim of the bowl with the end of the fern moving towards the foot of the bowl. So 
get my, make sure my slip is the right consistency before I trail directly onto the piece. I usually just kind of squeeze a little bit out, make sure things are flowing. And then I'll start. And I like to do, so I'm, you know, I'm not super precise with marking it out, but roughly thirds, so. And here. And so like, like I kind of build from um, a base design that I, that I do around. And then from there, I'll go back and kind of fill in depending on the shape of the piece, might make more sense to hold the piece up rather than have it on a banding wheel. And generally, I like this banding wheel to be about eye level. For the sake of this video, it feels easier to just have it right here, but usually I would like it eye level. I really like to think about my posture when I'm working. So I recommend if you're gonna be working on this for a while, really thinking about your setup having the setup be a little higher up so that you can not strain your body. So there we go. It's always kind of nice to spin it around after. So there we go. That was um, a demo of slip trailing. Um, I'm gonna show just how you might hold something, say, you've got a bigger piece. So I'm gonna move this back over to the desk over there. So say you have a bigger piece, um, such as this vase. Um, I often like to have a piece of foam that I might like lean, you know, once the piece is leather hard, leaning, um, leaning the piece against a piece of foam, the base of it. Um, and then turning it around. Um, this could also be on the banding wheel, um, but often I, I really like to kind of cradle things or if, if it's a flatter form, say a plate, um, the saucer is very tiny, but you get the idea. I can hold it in my hand, very similar to the way that I was holding the bat when I, when I was demoing um, slip trailing on the bat. So let's see, is there anything else that I wanted to share? Um, those are the main ideas, you know, the, the looking at the consistency of your slip and then also the consistency of the pottery that you're working with, um, making sure that it's leather hard. If it's too dry, um, say it's bone dry or even not quite bone dry, um, you're going to have trouble with adhesion, with the, with the slip, slip um, adhering to the surface. Um, it'll pop off as it dries. Um, and if, and if the clay is too wet, if your pottery is too wet when you're slip trailing on it, the, it'll have a tendency to just run off the surface. So, you know, play around with all those variables. Um, I'd love to hear from you. If you want to share your experiences or ask questions, my email is nicole.hummel at gmail.com. My Instagram is at Nicole Hummel Pottery, and my website is NicoleHummel.com, and I'd love to hear from you in any of those ways. You can also buy my work um, on my website mostly and see my process a lot on Instagram where I share a lot of my, um, my studio practice. So thank you so much for watching this today, and happy trails!